Hey guys, what's going on? So, um, some of you may have recognized or maybe you haven't. Uh, I have not been on social media. I deleted it in the beginning of December. I found myself uh, comparing myself to other people and didn't really like that and came to the conclusion that social media is just uh, a bunch of fake life. People are just posting their best selves on there. Uh, there isn't a lot of um, genuine content, especially these days. So I deleted it and um, noticed a lot of, you know, stuff that I was going through. It kind of spiraled me into a depression. Uh, I've been de dealing with that for a while. Um, and I noticed that I tend to create monsters in my head and push people away. So I reached out to a friend, uh, Vince Vargas, and was talking to him about it. And he recommended I check out the ayahuasca. Um, another buddy of mine, John Carlo, told me about this a long time ago, and he's done it. Uh, him and I lost touch. But Vince told me about Heroic Hearts Project um, and said that he knows a, a couple of his friends that, that did it through them and recommended I check them out. So I went on their website, checked them out. There's a long, extensive application process. After the application process, you, you, get, you do a Zoom call um, with one of the reps and pretty much talk about your trauma. <laughs> and they're screening you to see if they think that this is gonna be a good fit for you. And they deemed it was good for me, so. I'm here in Terrapoto, Peru. Today's day zero of my ayahuasca journey. Um, I'm hoping that I, I, I fix myself. Um, I went through a lot of traumatic things in the military uh, that stick with me today. And I've noticed that it gets in the way of me having good relationships. Um, for some reason, I create monsters in my head and accuse people of doing things that they're not doing. Um, I push people away. People that deserve to have me in their life and me deserving to have them in my life. But, you know, once you squeeze the trigger, they're, they're gone. Um, they move on with their lives and don't think about you anymore. Um, so, uh, I'm on this journey to also try to get out of my own way. I think that's one of the things that, that's the root of this. Um, I had the story or the thing, some of the things that happened to me while I was in, in the military um, that still affect me today. Uh, two huge traumatic experiences um, that get in the way of me being successful somehow I get my own way with these traumatic events. I, I procrastinate. Um, and yeah, like Drew and I have been doing a lot of these, you know, co comedy content on social media. Uh, we try to branch it off to do our own social media or not, not our own social media. We try branching off to do our uh, short films um, to grow within our careers. We, we did the stage play together. Uh, and these are, these are big things. These are huge accomplishments. And for some reason, because they haven't gotten me to a place that I have expected uh, them to get me, I, I just see them as failures. Um, so I'm hoping that doing this psychedelic drug will help me um, just let go, just let go of some of the some of the things I know I can't change and, and accept things that I can change um, and accept some things just as they are because life is hard sometimes. Um, so today's day zero. Uh, it's a seven day trip, 100% paid for. Uh, they encourage donations. That's how they fund these things. Uh, Horror Hearts Project. If you're experiencing depression and, and uh, PTSD, um, having the same same kind of thoughts that I'm stuck in, uh, they might be worth checking out. Um, or if you're in a position to help donate, I would, I would say go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah.
day zero. Um, we keep you posted. Day one is like an integration process. Day two, three, and four, all three of those days, you do ayahuasca. Um, and I'll be vlogging my experience uh, in, in post, like post post experience, talking about what I saw and what um, how I'm connecting these things together and what they mean for me. So I'm here, I made it to day one orientation. Uh, today was about just orienting us to the space that we're staying in. Um, we're in the jungle, if you didn't notice. We're in the Amazon jungle called, it's called Cloud Jungle is where we're at. So we're near the Andes Mountains and right next to the Amazon. Kind of like in between is what they were saying. Um, a little, little anxious. Uh, we start ayahuasca tomorrow. Today, like I said, they, they were just introducing us to the space. Um, talked a little bit about how the ceremony is going to go. Um, and something they brought up that I, I really like is um, they said that, you know, it's, this is medicine. A lot of people I told I was coming to do this, they were like, oh, so you're going to go do a drug. And I was like, yeah, whatever, but this is what it's for. Um, and I like the way that they explained it is we're going to have a shaman who's leading us through the ceremony and it's used as, as medicine and not, it's not a drug. We're not just out here to get high. Um, the purpose of ayahuasca is you go into it with with a focus and a purpose and um, of something that you want to fix or you want to work through some type of trauma. Um, and I'm really trying to figure out a way to get out of my own way because that comes up a lot where I'll just get depressed and stop doing things. Um, so. They fed us. Uh, the food here is fantastic. I ate a banana. I'm pretty sure that banana came straight from the tree. Um, and uh, America's got got stuff. You got you guys are doing things wrong. These GMOs are disgusting and making things taste like crap. The banana I ate was like the best tasting banana I ever had in my life. Um, but yeah, they have they have uh, cocinas cooks out here for us. Uh, they're doing fantastic I feel taken care of um, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow except for the morning we're supposed to do a, a vomitivo where we're gonna be drinking lemongrass tea and we drink it until our bodies reject it um, just as a bonding experience and to get used to people uh, how they they puke around us and it's kind of a group uh, cohesion thing as well as you know introducing ourselves to what, what may happen with the purging from from taking the medicine ayahuasca. Uh, not looking forward to that. I don't like puking. Puking is, well, I mean, we'll see what happens. Maybe maybe I'll like puking lemongrass tea as opposed to just, you know, when you're sick. I'm pretty sure vomiting is going to feel the same no matter what you're vomiting, though. But day one is, uh, is a go. And I'm looking forward to day two, where we actually do, um, we do the ceremony. And then day three, we do another ceremony. Day four, we do another ceremony. Day five is a, is a group uh, share. And um, I'll be talking more about that as they happen. Hey, what's up, guys? So today, we are at day two. Today, we're actually going to be doing ayahuasca. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute, because we just had another brief about it, which... Uh, I said this yesterday, I feel really taken care of here. One of the people during the brief said that she's done it like four times in the past and they've never had like a like a brief to uh, of what to expect. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was the flower baths that we get every day. Yesterday we had our first flower bath and the whole purpose of that is to wash off any unnatural chemicals from our bodies. Uh, we're not supposed to washed with soap and water out here. They have natural soap, natural shampoos for us, um, which, but they smell good, they smell fine. The flower bath really smells great. We're about to have lunch, but I am choosing not to eat. I'm gonna fast before the ayahuasca ceremony at 6.30, uh, 7.30 begins, 6.30 we do like a yoga beforehand, more of like a breathing exercise uh, to get us prepared for, for the ayahuasca journey that we're gonna be going on. Like I was saying, it's encouraged to fast 
is one, one of the guys, Jonathan, who is kind of the, the facilitator of this. Um, there's two, there's Jonathan and James. I spoke in depth with James last night about a lot of my traumas in the military and even some of my traumas growing up as a kid. Um, and it was interesting to hear his perspective on that uh, and his encouragement of, that also came up in the brief where he was telling everybody, he encourages everybody to go back to their childhood. We have a lot of trauma from our childhood that we haven't really processed uh, and we've kind of like compartmentalized and like put up stuff into a bottle. Uh, so I know that um, me personally, as I was talking to him, I was like, you know, my, my childhood wasn't that bad. You know, I had a roof over my head in comparison to other people. Uh, but I did experience some trauma growing up as, as a kid where, you know, there was alcoholism in my family. Uh, my, my father and mother split up when I was younger. Um, and some of the things and choices that I've been making throughout my life was all like kind of rooted and affected from, from that trauma that I wasn't really experiencing or putting together. And this is all previously, or this is all prior to me doing this ayahuasca, uh, the medicine. So it's good to, to know, like I was saying, uh, with the orientation we just had again, or like the briefing that we just had on the ayahuasca, they were really preparing us for some of the things that might come up and some of the things we might see or feel, uh, like we might feel like we're dying. Ayahuasca is actually loosely translated into um, vine of death. Uh, it's made from a leaf and a, a specific vine that they put together. Um, we met the, the uh, medicine man that's going to be administering the ayahuasca today. Uh, we all just like drink it and let it take us down whatever it wants to take us down. So I'm a little nervous, uh, but like I said, I feel taken care of because they're very respectful here and they treat it as a practice of medicine and it's not just some kick drug that people are doing. Uh, it's for a purpose and a specific concentration so that we can dive into ourselves and really explore our unconscious parts of ourselves. Um, oh, you guys probably want to hear about the, the vomiting this morning. At 7 a.m. we had to wake up and the way we do it is we we drink lemongrass that's grown on the land. The lemongrass is very uh, uh, like yellowish color and what they were explaining to is like when you're drinking this you're allowing the light to come into you. Um, so we just drink as many cups simultaneously as kind of like chugging beer if you want to uh, compare it to something until your body uh, rejects it. So the average number of cups people were drinking were like pr pretty regular sized cups, probably like two cups per thing. Um, uh, was six. A lot of people were drinking six and then, you know, vomiting up the, the stuff. And then you're, after your body rejects it, then you're allowed to uh, use your fingers and purge yourself. Um, you're not allowed to do that with the ayahuasca, but with the vomiting, it's kind of like, acts as another, um, like a, uh, acts as like a, you know, like bonding together, us getting used to each other, puking in front of each other, and also with the, allowing the light to enter ourselves and then puking that light out. So, I wonder, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I talked about the nature already, but it's fucking beautiful out here. The, the colors uh, within the, the Amazon rainforest are phenomenal. There's this bright blue butterfly that's flying around and I'm like, America, you guys are doing butterflies wrong. You're doing food wrong before. Now you're doing butterflies wrong. You gotta give it the give it the program. It's raining again today. I love the rain. And I'm excited to do the ayahuasca later. I am still nervous, but uh, it's something that you have to do and you have to face. Uh, one of the things that they said that you might feel like you're dying. So just embrace that uh, and just like go go towards it you have to go through it in order to 
understand what the medicine is trying to show you. So it could be a little bit scary, but I think it's going to be all for a good purpose and a good cause. Uh, I'm here because I want to better myself as a person, um, not only for myself, but for the people that are around me. And um, it's sad. I am sad a little today because I'm thinking about some of the people that I really wanted to stick around in my life that are no longer there. Uh, and it kind of sucks that they won't be um, when I come back through on the other side of this. And part of me is in it for them. Um, a lot of it for, for myself, though, too. Because I think it's necessary. I think it's necessary for us to uh, grow and we really need to look within ourselves in order to do that. And I, I've been looking for external like means to cope for too long. Um, and it's very difficult to find a good uh, counselor. And there's a lot of there's a lot of history with this medicine with helping people. Um, being able to dive into themselves and explore those unconscious parts of ourselves that we have not really addressed the issues we've addressed, the traumas we, we fail to address and neglect. Um, so that's, that's why I'm here. And tonight, tonight's my first journey. Last night was the first ayahuasca ceremony. Today's day three. We're going to have the second ayahuasca ceremony tonight. Last night, uh, so I caught myself, like, I, um, everybody takes um, kind of like a shot of the ayahuasca. And then you go back to your mat. We're sitting in a circle. Uh, there's a maestro and a maestra uh, from the Shipibo tribe who have been practicing this medicine for centuries, probably. Um, not, not those two bits in specific, because then they'd be like over 100 years old. But they were both so amazing. Uh, like the way they do ayahuasca ceremonies here, I guess it's different in, in every place. But here they um, they sing song. They sing a song, and they start like whenever they feel because they take the ayahuasca as well, and they start whenever they feel um, ready to. They, they feel like the presence in the room and the and the energy in the room can sense it. So, and they also talk to us one on one, kind of well afterwards today. Like I just uh, told them like why I'm here and stuff. In the beginning, um, I took the, the medicine, I went back to my mat, and I'm waiting for it to kick in. And I caught, I, I could hear other people, like you're supposed to try to keep your eyes closed. I heard other people like having, you know, feeling the, the symptoms of the medicine. And I wasn't feeling it, and I started comparing myself, which is one of the many reasons why I'm here. I caught myself comparing myself to other people too much, um, and not being grateful for what, for what I have and what I bring to the table. Uh, I haven't seen that within myself in, <sighs> in a very long time. Um, but it was like, when it finally kicked in, like, um, I ended up getting a second dose. Um, it was it was beautiful. Uh, I, I like rediscovered love for myself um, and acceptance self-worth. I saw a lot of crazy stuff. It was like you're in this fourth dimension and it starts, well, with me it started with uh, geometric shapes moving in the opposite direction with numbers. A lot of the stuff I saw it almost felt a little surface level and I wasn't able to dive in deeper to where I wanted to go. Um, I was trying to go like focus on seeing myself as a, as a child uh, to tell myself, like, everything's going to be fine, even though sometimes it's not. And it's, like, it's so interesting. Like, it, it almost, like, Trip almost taught me that uh, you, there's so much to life that we don't understand. And it's okay. We should just stop trying to understand everything. Um, I also saw myself as a plant, uh, kind of weird. A lot of the colors in the beginning of my 
um, experience was were dull um, and not, not really apparent. There's a lot of bugs here. Not really apparent. Uh, but then as I dove deeper, um, well, as deep as I could go, like I said, it, it felt like a lot of surface level. Um, there were a lot of like bright, vibrant colors. Uh, when I saw myself as a plant, it almost was some kind of metaphorical lesson that we all need nurturing, and a lot of our, our nurturing comes from ourselves, uh, not from external sources or people. And if we don't nurture ourselves, we'll never blossom. And if we don't do that, we never blossom. That's okay too. But the limitlessness of what I saw last night was it's like, if we're capable of all of this, why not nurture yourself? Why not become the best version of yourself? I felt certain things dying within me. Like, um, I never felt like I was gonna die. And I think part of the reason for that was the preparation they, they had leading us to, us up to this. Uh, they really like kind of harped on that a lot. Like, you might feel like you're gonna die. Just understand that you're not dying. You're gonna be okay. Um, parts of you might be dying. You might be letting go of certain things um, that, <laughs> that you've been holding on to for a long time and just to face that with a smile and move forward and that's the advice I took and I had a lot of laughter and found a lot of beauty uh, within certain certain like deaths within me a lot of it like I really still don't understand I felt my spleen at one point I don't know if my spleen is over here but that's what I felt um, and then my gallbladder later on, um, I could feel kind of the medicine moving through my, my, my bladder, uh, as well as like my, my GI tract. And that was, that was weird. Uh, I saw various versions of God. I did end up seeing myself as a child, uh, but I couldn't really say anything. Um, and I started, uh, I started rocking. It was something I used to do as a kid to, to go to sleep. Um, because it was like, I needed some kind of noise or something and the squeaking of the bed was, was what drowned out, drowned out all the other stuff in my life. I always felt like demons might be after me or something when I was a kid. Um, and when I was rocking, I was creating a force field over me. Uh, I haven't thought about that in a long time. But, I mean, the majority of it was me just trying to feel comfortable as a, as a child. Uh, especially because I had to, like, grow up real fast with my household. Um, and I'm not, like, I'm not blaming anything. Like, one of the things that they try to express here as well is, like, go into this with compassion, concentration, and uh, no judgment, um, because you know your parents, your parents probably had a lot of trauma too, and they don't realize that things that they went through that they never dealt with, and they're just trying to do their best uh, with what they have. Uh, yeah. This morning I woke up like. Elated, I was like so, so happy. Like the trip experience was so amazing for me. Um, and then, like, I started questioning things and uh, kind of, kind of feel a little bit of regret in a sense that I'm doing this because I need to let go of certain things and there's certain things I just don't want to let go of um, because I'm like holding on to some kind of some type of hope that it'll work out. Uh, but it might not and that's okay. I could just focus on myself and becoming a better me. Whatever that means. I was trying to try time travel. Uh, didn't work, clearly. I'm still here. I really wanted to time travel. Uh, fix some things that, some mistakes that I made in the past. Um, but 
another thing that kind of came to me was that like we only become our mistakes if we don't learn from them. <sighs> yep. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow uh, I'll do another one of these for whatever I see tonight. <laughs> but I'm definitely ready, and I might go deeper. I might not have a great experience. There's a lot of guys here that actually didn't um, can't make sense of stuff or had like really kind of like facing a lot of trauma that they didn't know that they were going to face. Um, a lot of SF guys too, which I found kind of interesting. I went to selection when I was in, uh, was on the army and I got peered out for maturity. They told me to come back. I got boarded too. They told me to come back and uh, wait, wait till I got some, or after I got leadership experience and seeing some of these guys here is like, you know, I kind of made a joke and was like, oh, you know, it's, it's good to see some of you guys here because that just tells me I would have had trauma no matter what, <laughs> no matter where, my, what direction or path my life went in. The second ceremony, um, didn't go as I expected, complete 180 from, from yesterday. Uh, I didn't go into any dimensions or anything like that. I was more like in my body, my own body, exploring how things kind of work within, within me. I went in with the intention of wanting to figure out where my, um, where my trust issues stem from. And I, I don't know why the, the medicine brought me into my own body because I really didn't understand it at first. Uh, I don't remember a lot of the things I saw. The number one thing that I took away was like, I remember seeing like, we're all just a collection of mucus, pus, and germs, um, which doesn't really tell me where my, where my trust issues stem from. I also wanted to be grateful for the things I have and accept things I can change. Uh, so, came out of that one a little bit more depressed because it was almost like if this is all we're made of and this is all we are, like, what's the point? Um, and another thing that stuck out to me was that, which is something I already know, so I don't know why I was trying to teach me something I already know, which is I've caused a lot of hurt uh, in my life. On inflicted on other people with my poor choices and decisions. And uh, so this morning I went and sought out uh, James, one of the one of the facilitators here, and talked with him and Jonathan, the other one, um, just on like like what what was the deal? This, uh, this medicine is going to give you and teach you things about yourself that you want and need. It's, about, it's mostly about what you need. It's not about what you want. Uh, it gives you what you need, which is what life is all about. Life's all about what you need, not what you want. Um, I feel like now. Uh, especially and one of the things that James pointed out to me was that you know like not every ayahuasca experience is going to be a positive one uh, a lot of the guys here on the first day had really bad negative feelings and experiences from their their journeys um, but it's always giving you something that you need you really need to come at it with compassion and trust. Um, you may not understand what you see or what it's trying to teach you or tell you. Uh, it might be years down the road that it hits you, but James was able to pinpoint, um, he asked me a question that really hit, hit home, was, um, it's possible that 
the medicine was trying to teach me uh, patience. Which is something that I've lacked in my relationships, um, especially with like the career path that I chose. I really want something to come of it uh, with the career, but especially patience um, within relationships. I mean, one of the one of the boxes you have to check off. They have to check off at the VA when they're when they're doing your PTSD assessment is uh, <sighs> is your ability to maintain and make new new friendships and relationships. <sighs> and obviously, I fucking suck at that. with how I'm like pushing people away all the time and not having patience and jumping to conclusions, um, accusing people of doing things that they're not doing. This is, this is across a lot of relationships, not just one, but obviously the freshest one is the one you're gonna d uh, dwell on and think of. Um, so tonight's the last ceremony and I'm just going to approach it with as much open-mindedness as I can. Um, I mean, yesterday I, I was crying too uh, when I was doing this um, vlog thing, but it wasn't, you know, a lot of it was sad. There was sad tears, but there's happiness within within them. Today is just it's just sad. But that's uh it's a part of life too, right? So you have to find beauty within that and keep moving forward and hopefully make the changes that that you're capable of making so that you can become a better person. So I wanted to show you guys the Maloka. Uh, this is where the ceremonies take place. Um, everybody sits in a circle and the maestro and maestra sit in the center. Um, everyone goes up one at a time and receives their ayahuasca dosage. Um, and then you go back to your, to your perspective. Matt, sit down and kind of wait. Um, the maestro and maestra will smoke tobacco. Tobacco acts as like, tobacco is a plant that acts as, it's, it's like the hub of all plants that is able to communicate with every other plant is what, what they believe um, in the Shipibo tribe and a, a bunch of other tribes as well, historically. So, um, they fill the room with uh, tobacco smoke and and you're kind of breathing this in. You're able to get one, two if you want to smoke as well. Um, and then they begin their Icaros, which is they sing. They don't sing in any kind of tongue that is known. Um, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure they know it either. It's just whatever they feel. Um, they're both singing their own song and it's not in sync, but it's, there's like this mystical element to it that creates, I guess the, a portal um, is the best way to explain it, that allows you to, to access your, your inner universe um, and the universe as a whole. Uh, very interesting very very beautiful um once once they they're done singing there's like an opening song uh then they split off and then they go counterclockwise 
and sing a, a song to each individual person that's participating in the ceremony. Um, and the way they're describing it is like, they're pretty much performing surgery on your body, your mind, heart, spirit. They're opening you up and finding the things that um, you go in with, with your own focus, but they're finding the things that are causing you trauma, pain, and they're kind of expelling those things out of you. And that's kind of what brings down the purging as well as the ayahuasca itself. Um, everybody purges a different way. Some people puke. Uh, I personally, the past two nights, uh, I've done two ceremonies so far. I, I do a lot of uh, yawning the first night. The second night was some yawning and a lot of burping, a little bit of farting. Um, but everybody has their own way of purge. Some people, some people puke, some people cry. One thing that I've noticed is I, I allow myself to feel um, after the ceremony the next day, I'm more open to feeling the feelings, letting the feelings come and letting them in a sense purge out. And I'm, I'm crying a lot more. Uh, I think a lot of us bottle our emotions and save them for another day, but that's not, that's not conducive to a, having a healthy mind, body, and spirit. Um, you should let these, these feelings come out in, in ways that they that are healthy. Uh, obviously if you're getting get angry, don't go beat somebody up, you know, take it to the gym, go hit a punching mat, a punching bag, um, find ways to express your anger. I think even though my second night wasn't, um, as, 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 as positive as the first night, I feel like this medicine is, is working. Uh, I believe it, I trust it. And I think just going into tonight's last ceremony, I just need to have a clear intention of some of the things I'm missing and lacking in life. And the one thing that, if I could get the most specific, I think that'll be the most beneficial is I do not have unconditional love for myself which is uh hard to admit but but good to know and i think tonight we'll we'll see what happens um i'll obviously report back tomorrow and yeah this either way like this this experience so far has been phenomenal and magnificent um and even you know, as the day has gone by, I'm thinking more about some other lessons that, that the medicine was trying to teach me last night was, I remember at one point, um, and it's, you know, things are finally coming, coming back to me a little bit here and there. I remember at one point I, I even thought to myself, like, I, I'm just gonna go to sleep. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna, like, I, I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna feel the effects of the drug, and I, but I'm just gonna like lay down, I did. Um, you can't really go to sleep because it's 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 ha happening to you. Uh, your journey, you're going through a journey, a process. But I think that parallel with a lot of times, especially lately, I've, I've been procrastinating work. And here, um, this is what they call it. they call it. You're doing you're doing your own work. So when you're going through your journey, and the effects of the of the medicines taking taking over you still have to be kind of cognizant in a way to where you're asking questions, staying focused and getting curious, um, approaching this with curiosity, with, with, uh, with compassion. Um, and fearlessness, uh, a lot of a lot of other vets that are here are having very awesome breakthroughs, um, but they're going they're doing the work they're going through it they're they're putting themselves against a lot of some people are seeing actual demons, um, some people are are seeing a lot of like very scary things, um, and 
you know, they feel like they're dying. So I just need to be braver and, and really do work tonight. Um, James offered the possibility that perhaps the, the medicine was taking it easy on me the night before. And that happens sometimes because it was preparing me for what's to come. Um, I think that's true. I think also it's true that I lack trust in faith as well as um, patience. And just knowing that going into tonight is, is gonna it's gonna work wonders, I believe. So guys, so last night was hard work, um, but I had a breakthrough. Uh, I don't know how to, where to start. Um, I saw a lot of stuff that I might not remember until later on, um, but right in the beginning, before the medicine even kicked in, um, I started crying. Uh, a thought came to me. Uh, Drew, best friend, um, told me a few, like maybe a month back, a couple weeks back, maybe longer, two months back. We're walking the dogs together and he, uh, he said, you have a big heart, <laughs> don't ever lose that. Cause he knows about a lot of the stuff I've been through and how I try to fix things. Um, and when I, I reheard that, I just, I, I broke down. And then, and then I heard uh, Rita telling me that I, I'm so self-aware. Um, she hasn't met anyone that's so as self-aware as me. And then a flood of thoughts and voices came to me of all my friends tell, <laughs> telling me um, good things about me. And I started finally seeing the good in me and why people love having me around them. And I remember telling Drew uh, a while back, a few months back that I don't understand how everybody else can see the light in me, but I can't. But I needed, for some reason, the medicine was helping me realize that. Um, and I gained a lot of, a lot more self acceptance, self love, um, just seeing me for me and not the, not the thoughts that I allow come into and interfere with how I feel about myself. Um, it, it was a gift. It was, it was a gift. Uh, it's just, I don't, it's like, you, you can't even put, you can't put this into words. Like this, when, when the Maestro and the Maestro are doing the Icaros, they're, they're singing different notes. And at certain points, they, they might hit a low note or a high note. Something You feel something changing in yourself. And it feels like it's negative thoughts and doubts about yourself that you've allowed pretty much uh, infect you like a cancer. And then you, you purge it out, either through crying or I did a lot of puking last night. I felt like I was going to die for real. Uh, but it felt good. It, it felt like it needed, these things needed to get out of me. Um, this morning I was really, really sore <laughs> uh, and tired. Um, I ate breakfast this morning. I'm probably going to eat lunch. I'm going to skip dinner, stay on some kind of intermittent fasting diet. Because um, I think that's important too. Like your body knows there's like so much we don't understand about how our bodies work and how the universe works and it, it just feels like we we are our own we're in charge of our own lives you know um anything is possible anything and 
you can choose to sit on the couch all day or you can choose to get up and go work out. You can choose to write your book. You can choose to procrastinate it. Um, but it's, it's up to you. You know, it's up to you to do that. Nobody's going nobody's gonna to show up for you. I mean, you're going to have people who are your friends uh, give you words of advice and influence you. And, that, and that's all great, but it's really up to you to, to pull yourself out of a rut if you're in one. So, again, like I 100% I <laughs> recommend this to anybody struggling with depression, PTSD, uh, someone feeling stuck, even if they're not feeling stuck. Like right now, I, I have a lot of positivity and, and light shining for me. I, I, I remember uh, the maestro at one point, like him putting these things in me and I felt a huge glow of, of like yellow light inside me. And I felt like that was hope and faith and a huge light of blue light. And I felt like that was, that was like trust that I've been lacking and patience um, that I need to nurture now. Like I've had these things in the past and somewhere along the, ro the road or the journey, my, my personal journey, I I've let it go and stopped being curious about life and stopped enjoying life um, and stopped, you know, just letting things be. As hard as it is sometimes, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta let go and let things be. Um, because nothing, nothing is really under our control besides the choices that we make. And it's okay to make mistakes as long as you're learning from them. And if you keep making the same mistake, try to learn from it. There's nothing wrong with fucking up, you know? Uh, failure is a part of life. We learn from failure. We learn from our, mistake, our mistakes. But you become those failures and mistakes if you stop trying. If you give up, so just uh, just don't give up, you know. But yeah, like I was saying, like I got all these great emotions flowing through me and and, and hope and faith, and I I feel like there's so much more to learn. Um, so I'm definitely gonna tap into that more. Because I think that's needed. <sighs> yeah, check out, um, do your own research on ayahuasca. Uh, do your own research on psychedelics. I feel like they're, everything was put on this earth for a reason for us to use and, and learn from. And there's so much, there's just so much. Like my mind, my mind is blown right now. But it's good. It's a, it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, check out Heroic Hearts Foundation if you're a veteran and you're struggling with these similar things that, that I've been going through. I know a lot of you are. Um, check it out. And I remember going to fill out this application process and it was just a long form. And I was like, I don't want to do any paperwork today. But there's there's something else inside of me, this like need for change, need to stop doing living this mundane life of, of day to day and procrastination and and just like putting things off. So I I did it. I like stormed in, filled that thing out, had a consultation within the week, um, and had a date. I was actually supposed to go uh, last month, but I couldn't because of scheduling. But I was like, all right, like let's schedule for April. And I, I did it, I came here, I did the work. Uh, there's a lot of work to do and there's a lot more work to do. So I'm gonna do it. A lot of the meetings happen here. Um, some of the sharing happens. Uh, we just had a uh, kind of like a reintegration um, brief about what to do after we're done tomorrow. Um, and we're, so there's a diet, uh, dieta you're supposed to follow before you come here. And it's uh, part of that's no masturbation, um, no orgasms, 
no taking any drugs of any any kind and some of that's continuing on uh, also there's no eating red meat uh, limiting dairy products uh, no coffee no caffeine um, so after after tomorrow's over we are allowed to have coffee again uh, we are allowed to eat red meat but some of the other things no medication um, that's gonna that needs to last for at least two weeks to a month uh, the no masturbation no no stimulation of any sort of like jumping out of helicopters or which none of us have any right or planes no skydiving uh, we're allowed to like go snowboarding and stuff like that anything that's like exercise is good but try to take it take it slow and the reason for that it, that was explained is also no alcohol for at least two weeks uh no marijuana i don't smoke marijuana anyway but the reason that was explained was because like i was explaining before like they're they're pretty much operating on us surgery wise in a spiritual manner uh with mind body and soul and you don't want to like they've planted seeds these seeds that are uh, that you need to nurture and grow um, and start making different decisions uh, with your diet, with the decisions you're making, uh, the things that you're doing that you used to do on a regular basis. It's really up to you to nurture these seeds um, that are, are gifts um, from the Shubibo tribe and the Maestra and the Maestra. And it's like, you know, if you, if you, do the things that they're asking you not to do for two weeks. You're gonna you're gonna distract these seeds from growing and blossoming into the the new you. The changes that are supposed to happen within you. If you go back to your old habits, obviously you're undoing all the work that that's been done. Um. So yeah, it's just something to know. For when if you guys are interested in checking this out this place out i know there are a lot of vets out there a lot of awesome you know audience members that, that watch the channel who are vets who uh, are struggling with ptsd depression and your own thing your own you're battling your own demons on a daily basis i recommend coming to this place 100 percent tenfold um Ayahuasca is a medicine, it's not a drug. Uh, it is a psychedelic, so you're gonna see some crazy stuff, but it's all for a purpose. And if you feel stuck, you know, this is a this is a good way to force yourself to look within yourself to make the changes that you need to change to grow into a better person.